Well, Yuka Roy joins me in the studio. It's good to see you, Yuka. So you're going to be telling us about the European Central Bank, which has now cut off, uh, cut interest rates again. Yeah, again, uh, Yinka, it's the third time that policymakers at the European uh, Central Bank de decided to lower interest rates. The bank's benchmark deposit rate will be lowered to three and a quarter percent. The decision comes as inflation across the 20 member eurozone dropped to 1.7 percent in September, below the ECB's two percent target. The bank only started raising rates from minus 0.5 percent in July of 2022 to fight inflation that was later later than many of its peers. But then the ECB delivered 10 straight hikes and kept its deposit rate at a record high of 4% for nine months. Europe's post-pandemic economic recovery has been slow. The ECB president says that she doesn't see a recession coming, but warned of risks from heightened geopolitical tensions. Let's take a lesson. The risks to economic growth remain tilted to the downside. Lower confidence could prevent consumption and investment from recovering as fast as expected. This could be amplified by sources of geopolitical risk, such as Russia's unjustified war against Ukraine and the tragic conflict in the Middle East, which could also disrupt energy supplies and global trade. Well, elsewhere, UK in China, the government has announced some more stimulus measures to prop up the troubled real estate sector. Well, this new support package aims to help enable stalled housing projects to complete so people who have bought new homes could finally expect to have them built. The central government says it will almost double credit available under its so-called whitelist scheme, which pushes local authorities to encourage developers to finish pre-sold housing units. It's the latest in a series of stimulus measures that have so far fallen short of expectations. Brian Quinn has the details. Another round of stimulus and another round of disappointment. Thursday saw Chinese officials roll out new measures to prop up the country's battered real estate market via the so-called white list of unfinished projects worthy of government aid for their completion. To ensure the financing of real estate projects and the delivery of housing, we will optimize and improve the white list mechanism with greater efforts and more concrete measures. China's real estate sector once made up 25 percent of the country's GDP. It now counts some 20 million pre-sold homes that have yet to be finished, many of them abandoned by bankrupt developers, with buyers hung out to dry on their deposits and opting to stop paying mortgages for homes they've little hope of seeing built. The white list was launched in January to help deliver residential units. It's now being expanded to include commercial real estate. Its budget has been set at 4 trillion yuan, equivalent to around 520 billion euros for the rest of the year, to be rolled out immediately. Thursday's announcement follows several other incremental stimulus measures rolled out in recent days. Ones analysts say are far from the stimulus bazooka needed to revive the world's number two economy. China is set to release its latest economic growth data this week, with expectations that third quarter GDP likely expanded at its slowest pace since 2023. President Xi Jinping is urging officials to make all efforts to hit the country's goal of 5 percent growth for 2024, a target the World Bank says China is likely to miss this year and fall even further short of next year. And here in France, Yuka, workers at the French uh, pharmaceutical giant Sanofi went on strike this Thursday. About one-fifth of, uh, of some 480 employees at Sanofi's plant in Compiègne walked off their job and already voted to continue the rolling strike on Friday. They're protesting against the planned sale of a controlling stake in Sanofi's consumer healthcare arm, Opella, to a U.S. hedge fund. Unions say the plan puts 1,700 jobs in France at risk, while the French government warned it could block the deal to preserve its medical sovereignty. Opella's products include the painkiller Dolipran, which is the most sold medicine in France. Meanwhile, a consortium led by French investment fund PA. PAI Partners has reportedly submitted a new higher bid to Biopella, giving Sanofi until Sunday to consider the offer. Let's hear what some union representatives had to say. 
Dolly Pran must stay in France. It belongs to the French people. We've already given up too much in terms of French industry, whether it's automobile, textile. We've ceded too many things. We can't give up our health sector. What generally happens with investments from pension funds is that their pursuit of profitability can lead to trade-offs. And we know that the targets of cost adjustments are usually employees and production sites. Sanofi's stock has gained about 11% since the start of the year. On Thursday, it was up six-tenths of a percentage point from the previous day's close, as you can see there. European markets made a positive finish after the latest rate cut decision by the European Central Bank. Paris ended up 1.2%. Frankfurt rose eight-tenths of a percentage point. Shares on Wall Street are also rising mildly. NVIDIA and other chip makers are leading the way on the Nasdaq after Taiwan's TSMC posted better than expected profits for the latest quarter. And that's it for business. Yuka Warrior, thank you so much for that. The latest on uh, business news there.